Monday, September 21st, um, Motown Select Board meeting. We are meeting both uh, Ray and I, Ray Washburn, myself here at the town office. Uh, John's on uh, virtually, and we've got a guest with uh, Jamie and Cheryl Lynn. Uh, Cheryl Lynn's uh, here for, I think, uh, CAI with uh, Mr. Rossi at 615. Um, Don Wexler will be joining us momentarily, and Sasha's here taking notes, um, and Callie is not uh, available tonight. So, Jamie, uh, general public comment, is that what you're here for? Well, I also saw that you have some hall on the agenda that might um, intersect with the library business, so I thought I would be here for that. The uh, only comment I have really is that a couple of weeks ago, um, I was reading the minutes and I saw that someone had inquired about what was happening with the library building. And I just want to say you can let people know that the trustees can answer any questions about the building if you, um, you know, you don't have to deal with that. You could just send them to us and we can take care of so, that. So at this point, what, what are you, uh, what are you guys doing with the building or what is your, what's the idea there? Well, right now, nothing. <laughs> so um, until we, you know, Don is, um, has that committee that he's going to form that's going to um, consider the possibility, I think, of the library. Right. Hall. You know, so depending on which way that goes, um, that would affect our decisions about what to do with the building itself. Um, but right. if people have an interest, you know, you know, like if Nancy, I know that it was Nancy that um, inquired and if she had some fabulous plan, and it would be nice for us to know that um, what it was, and that if if the building became available in some way, we could let her know. Right, or maybe we should reach out to Nancy and see if she wants to join that committee. That you know, uh, you know, people who have those ideas and maybe have interest right. in that building. Um, you know, so maybe uh, all the power there. So when that gets going, um, that'll be, you know, maybe something we can reach out to. I know right at this point, what's holding up, um, we were working on a group or, or I think in fact, it was something Don was gonna work on uh, as far as getting people together to figure out how to meet. And then when that could do, when that could happen, uh, that library uh, or slash, town hall committee would get together. Right. So anyways, anything else, Jamie? No, otherwise I'm just here to hang out. Just here to hang out. Wow. Because you know, it's fun. Good, no, I think uh, we have a good time and you can be informed and there's often things that uh, you can add and we're happy to hear as long as things are uh, good and respectful there. So, As I said, I saw that the town hall is on the on the agenda coming up later in the agenda. So, um, you know, if that's going to affect our services, I'm just interested in that. On the agenda, of the town hall. Yes. On the old business stuff. Because town hall committee meetings. Oh, that's just um, old business. But yeah, you can hold, hang around for that. But I don't think there'll be much discussion on that tonight. But. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to turn off my um, video and I'm probably going to like fold some laundry and stuff. So. All right, Jamie, take it easy. Nice talk with you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Is there anyone else on um, for general public comments? Not seeing any, uh, anyone, Sasha, you're, you're here. It looks like Dawn's still having difficulties navigating the, uh, the internet. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, Sherilyn, if you want to go ahead and, and pop off mute and kind of introduce our next uh, guest, Mr. Rossi, and yes. we can go from there. Franco um, is not going to be able to make it until about seven o'clock tonight. He sent an oh. email. Oh, I'm looking at him right now. Oh, you are? Yes, he's here. Well, this is Franco um, from CAI and 
Um, we've been, we have been dealing with CAI for a couple of years now doing our tax mapping. Um, and I have talked to him in regards to um, utilizing some more of the services that they have to offer um, that we are already paying for and we could add more to it if we'd like to. So I asked him to come and speak with you guys. Yeah, so Sherilyn had reached out to talk about uh, um, some certain documents that maybe could make available to the public uh, if, if you decide to do so. And in our discussions, I realized that your website, uh, the Access GIS site that we provide for you, um, that uh, hopefully you're aware of, um, is, is still password protected. It's not, it's not open to the public. Um, we, have, we have many clients who are, uh, well, virtually all our clients have that service open to the public. And by doing so can make data available to the public without them having to come to the town office or to call and request a, a copy of something. Um, so that's where, where I wanted to you know, just um, <clears throat> take the board's temperature and see is there interest in opening the site up to the public? And if so, do you, what data do you wanna make available? Most towns make the tax cards available, the property record cards. Uh, the, I know, uh, Sherilyn, we, I think we had talked about the uh, uh, the tax tax bills, uh, making those available. Um, I can share my screen and show you some sites that are already doing that, or I, um, or we can just I can answer questions or. I don't know Maybe how that would be nice if you could uh, start with showing us what's out there and then how it's utilized, uh, and then I'm sure we'll have questions for both you and Carolyn. Okay, so I'm at the Moore Town site. It's showing. Uh, so you'll see I'll, whenever I go to other sites, they'll all look the same. They just have different data. Um, if I go up here, I'm going to go to um, to Highgate because specifically because I off the top of my head, I know they post their tax bills too, along with their tax cards. So this is the Highgate site, and uh, I don't know. I'll go to Smith. We're live, by the way. I'm not doing any canned. We're actually on Highgate's public-facing site. Okay. So if I zoom to that, let's say that's the parcel I was looking for, and you can see that they have uh, their – this is a CAI property card, which I think you already have. It's just a summary uh, card uh, showing the fields that they want to show. Now, they have very little there because they're actually hosting the NEMREC property record cards. They wanted the public to get exactly what they would get if they came into the office to, uh, uh, you know, when they requested this data. So they're getting it, you know, just publicly uh, online without having to call in or, or, uh, um, or come in to the office. They also have their tax bills. And I assume it's, yes, yeah, it's the redacted tax bill. Um, so they have the capabilities. Uh, so this is, we'll host those property record cards or the tax bills uh, for you. There's no additional charge for that. There would be a one-time fee to link up the data. You'd have to produce the PDFs for us and we'd link them up. Um, in Highgate's case, they went a step further and they had us build them a, um, uh, what we call a data pro uh, batch upload utility. So in other words, you wouldn't rely on us to link them up and host them for you all, uh, to refresh them for you. You would have the capability of refreshing it whenever you choose, anytime you want. We'll do it once a year at no charge anyways, but if you wanna do it during the year, there would be a fee to do that. Whereas with a, with a batch upload utility, you could do it as many times as you want. We wouldn't even know what's happening. You, you do it as you, as you choose to do so. Just like when you update the owner information. Uh, Smith sells to Jones, you update the grand list data, you run your data processor, and the new owners are available on the website. So you have complete control over that, and you can have complete control over updating the property record cards. Um, and this is something we already have the capability to do. Correct. Aside from the link. Yeah, so right now you have, you have the full capability of doing it. Uh, there would be a one-time fee to link up the documents you, that you give us. I think you're gonna to have to help me out. Was it 500 bucks? I didn't make, didn't make yeah, a Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. 
and then, um, but I think uh, for, um, uh, I think the one-time fee of a thousand bucks, we would get them, link them up and build the data processor so that you could do it whenever you wanted at no charge uh, and no extra charge. Uh, you have the capabilities right now. We just don't have the data. So if I, I sign into your site, well, also you don't have it. So it's a good internal tool uh, to make data available at least. But if you open it to the public, that's where the real value comes in, right? And so people don't have to uh, interrupt. So if we look up Smith. So you have your surveys are already linked. So those could be available to the public. Now, if you wanted to, to uh, keep those on a staff site, we could do that so the public couldn't see them. Uh, but that's great information that I think should be available to public. People can see how it, how their maps were put together. Could you go back there again, please? Sure. So that's that's a copy of the survey that was used, or one of them. You notice there are two of them. Yeah. So if I go here. Hopefully it's the right one. I don't know how many five. Is that what this road is? It is. It's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I started getting nervous. I'm trying to see how does that fit in there? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you already have that data available to you internally. Uh, you can add to that the property record cards. Right now you have the CAI property card. Again, that's just a report, but you got nothing on it. There's no data there. Um, some towns have a much better, let me, I can show you another town. Let me. Uh, so do we have the, Sherilyn, do we have the Nemric information, which he just, he shared with us from Highgate? We do, we have all of it. We like, that's what he was talking about. We just need to link it up. And um, that was something I would, you know, had talked to Sprinkle about with the list of cards and the tax bills, because when someone is refinancing, not only is it that they need their deeds, but tax bills and lister cards are always something that attorneys need to get their hands on, or even, uh, you know, real estate agents. Now, as it is now, is that something that you charge for? It is. It's you a $1, $1 per, per lister card and a tax bill is a dollar. All right. So if it's on this public domain like this, is there ability to still charge or is that gone away? That's a Franco question. Yeah, so our system, we're not set up to have a, a pay through the system. Uh, so unfortunately, no, it would, there is no ability to charge for that through our system. Sherilyn, what do we, and I, I guess I have the, although it doesn't break it down here in the town office report, what do we, what do you estimate per year is the annual revenue with that? It's not a whole lot. Um, I could get you a better answer other than it's not a whole lot, but I don't have that. Would answer. you say, would you say under 500? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Most, uh, in, in most cases where the, the towns that have investigated that, they've, they've come to the conclusion that the interruptions cost a lot more than what they can make off the sale of those copies. Like perhaps one, yeah, if you're saving a half a day or running around just one time, it's yeah. probably worth, well, maybe. Yeah, second. right. Uh, I, so, yeah. Uh, I've so, gone so to we, another site just to show you. Uh, I'm trying to find, I think, Proctor. Yeah, so the CAI, I'm showing you Proctor, Vermont. The CAI property card you see there is more filled out. They've got more fields. They've decided to fill it out more. But as I said, most towns are going away from this in favor of actually having the Nemric property record card there. Again, so that they get the same thing if they come into the office as if they were getting it online. Yeah, it would make sense, I would think. I'm, uh, you know, I can show you much more of the system if you want. I think the goal this, this evening was really to talk about getting the data linked, but really, if you want to do that, which I really, really strongly recommend, I, I recommend you opening the site up to the public because uh, that's where you're going to get the value for it. Oh, absolutely. I think that's 
would be the only reason to do it at this point. So everyone has access. Um, yeah. And I think that minimal uh, uh, disruptions here with the staff and plus just people not really wanting to travel. Um, yeah. And probably a better, uh, better uh, way to do it now. All right, so I don't know how much, if any of you have used your, the site you have for right now, but as you've already seen, uh, you search for your parcels over here. You can search under owner name by map and lot or by address. Um, do you want me to go to a specific lot or do you care what, I, what I'm doing? Go to uh, Hogaboom. <laughs> uh, is that an A or an E? Uh, H O O T. Oh, oh, oh. Yep, there it is. Yeah, so I zoom right. Oh, we're already in that area. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> right there. Um, so you find the parcel. You can see the plan that was used to compile that parcel, as I've already shown you. Um, uh, when we link your, we've got the CAI property card, but again, there's nothing there. Um, when we link your property record card or, or tax bill, whatever, whatever information you want to make available can be there. If you have a staff site, you can make available available data available only to staff, not to the public. Okay, you don't have, currently have a staff site. Um, there's a one-time fee for a staff site. If we do it at the same time we're doing this other work, it's 475. Otherwise, it's 950. There's no ongoing fee for it. Um, you can do a butters list. So if I want to say, okay, I want to see everybody uh, that is in a butter, I'm going to put zero in. I hit select. So now it'll give me everybody who's a direct to butter. It zooms way out because one of the parcels is very large. Um, now a butter is typically across the road as well. So rather than use 100 feet or 50 feet to get across the road and maybe get something you shouldn't, we have this added tool. So I know I add and remove. I need to add this parcel and this parcel. Now I can look in my abutters report. Subject parcel with all the abutters. I can do mailing labels. I, I've already started my sheet. So I want to start printing my labels there. There's my mailing labels. Um, and you can export those to uh, to uh, Excel as well. So you can manipulate the data once, you, once you've once got that report. Um, uh, with, a, with a staff tool, so that's an abutters list tool. If you have a staff tool, uh, the staff tools, you can also, let's turn on some layers here. Let's turn on uh, a flood map. Uh, here we go, there's some flood map here. So with, with, st with staff tools, you can select the feature, not just parcels. So one of the things that comes with it is I select this flood zone and I can find everybody that's within the flood zone and get a report of that as well. Um, but since I've gone this step to show you the layers, I'm going through this pretty fast because I- That's all right, that's all right. got a regular meeting. I know I'm trying not to take up too much of your time, but um, so these are the layers you have available to you right now. Uh, so on can the you- site. Uh, can you show me the bridge and culverts maps? Is that up in the top? So this is data that bridges and culverts is the green dots are culverts and then that symbol is a bridge. So it's not much of a symbol here. That's coming directly from data that was uh, available from VCGI. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's some value certainly in this, I think. You can turn on the aerial imagery and you can see it with the imagery as well. So apparently there's culverts here. Looks like there would be there. That's hard to tell there. Um, so that's culvert data. You, I don't know if you can identify what they have for associated data there. I know we do a, a culvert inventory, so that must be yeah. where so it here's ends the, up. Here's the, in, here's the information available about that culvert. Okay. Oh. Um, there may be other layers available. When this site was originally set up, uh, whomever we had assigned to it worked with whomever there, I don't know. 
uh, and here's a list of all the various layers. We put them out there and then it's really for you to review and say, we like this, we don't like this, uh, leave this, don't leave that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this, I was, I already jumped over and showed you these other base maps that are available. So there's all these, excuse me, layers, but there's also these base maps because we're an Esri business partner. You've got all this Esri imagery available to you. Um, local imagery is, it simply means state imagery. Uh, so there's a, the 2011, uh, 15, 11, 15, 13, 17, uh, this is the imagery available from the state. If you had done some custom imagery for your, for a project for your town, we could put that there as well. And then uh, others, uh, is we typically stick Google in there. And that's what I normally go to because uh, most people are used to seeing Google imagery. Mm -hmm. But being an Esri business partner, we really can't have a Google tab up there. <laughs> so... so um, let me turn that off so we don't. Uh, get back to looking at the tax maps. Um, so again, there's these layers. I'll turn the flood map on. Well, let me turn that back on and show you. You've got very simple to use measure tools as well. So I'm going to find one that makes sense. Well, it doesn't need to make sense. I want to know this person comes and said my pro my property is all in the floodplain. Well, I can go and check that. I turn the floodplain on. Now look at you have to remember where your floodplain data come from and how accurate those data are, but it still gives you some idea. I want to measure. I can measure area. I can do it in acres or hectares or whatever I want. And I, and it, all, you, all you have to do is point and click. So I can go around this parcel. Where is the property line on this parcel? Well, I guess it follows a river. Yeah. yeah. So I can go right around and say, I'm not being careful here, obviously. Uh, 0.93 acres are within the flood zone. Um, or you can let's turn on some imagery and say, um, this person's planning on selling this piece of land. I can just quickly go around and say, or if uh, 5.8 acres. It's a great tool to use to measure conservation easements, how much of the land is in conservation or outside of conservation, to check against that kind of stuff. It's also a great tool if there's a mapping question. A landowner comes in and says, you know, the maps are wrong or or maybe an, an inconsistency you may have uh you may have this parcel here um, um come on regenerate for me please so you may have this parcel at uh two point or say 3.5 acres in your in your assessment database but it's 2.2 on the map and you're not sure which is right well before you even reach out to us you can double check maybe we screwed it up and you can just double check your acreage and it says well it 1.1 now we really got a problem <laughs> i just i just identified a problem here <laughs> I got to make a note of that. <laughs> I'll double check that. But, well, yeah, obviously, if this is 3.3, .3, that can't be 2.2. .2. But again, it's a great tool to use internally for issues like that. Okay, there. Um, there's drawing tools. Um, you already have your culverts on, but I'm going to turn those off. And you can say, you can, I can use these tools and I want to create a dot. I want to make it, I definitely don't want it that color. I want to make it red and put it here. And I'm going to put in a, uh, some text. I want the text to be red. I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to put uh, act up 
Culvert. Uh, enter. I can use my arrow. I can do this. And now I've got full tools to print this. I can do map only, or I can I can do a, a you know, portrait. I can leave the scale. I can title it whatever. Uh, over. I print the PDF. It's printing a map for me, and I can email that to my roadie or whomever needs to go out and check out what the problem is. That's really pretty handy. The other thing that's great too is if I, let's get out of this printing tool. I'm gonna clear this out. Let's go back to my zone, my wet, my flood map. We've got, there's a share button here. So I can take this. Come on. I click the link to the clipboard. I click that. I copy that. I I now write make it write an email. I paste that into the email, the body of the email. Send it. The person turns clicks on it, and it opens up the site with all the same layers on that you're looking at. So you know you're looking at the exact same thing. That's a uh, that uh, that you're trying to convey rather than trying to do so over the phone. Um, so that's a useful tool as well. Um, I it's showed you. It's pretty incredible you can do all those things. This is, this is terrific. Yeah, and this is all, we're already on your site. This is stuff you already have. One thing I do want to show you about the printing, um, you can uh, do portrait, you can title it whatever you want. And I can turn on the legend. So now when I print this map, it's gonna take a little bit longer because now it's making a nice map with a border, a north arrow and a legend and all that information. Once it's printed. You can see that now you can, you know what that green stuff, those green lines is the 100 year flood zone. Okay. So the legends are available. We have it, you can print it. It defaults to without that stuff just because it's much quicker if you just want a quick copy, right? Now this looks like uh, an incredible useful stuff. I think um, if it's something we go forward with, uh, I think training would be one of the things that would we need to look at as well. I mean, all this is great, but if we don't have people that are trained or, or know how to use it, it'll sit on the shelf like a lot of things uh, can. But. Yeah, well, once and it, that, that's, that's true. Once you open it to the public, it won't sit on a shelf. They're gonna be using it a lot once they have, see it's available to them. Um, oh, by the way, I, I'll, I'll just show you. Yours won't show any information, but, oh no, you don't have a staff site. On the, on, with a staff site, you can actually uh, get reports on how much activity the site is getting as well. Um, if you'd like, I can show that to you on a different site. No, that's all right. Um, Ray, what do you think? Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, my, uh, it's all great information. Uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, all the information out there where it's accessible to anybody. Um, you know, concerned about identity theft or whatever, uh, people can look up. For, and, I, and I know it's public information, but it's still, it's out there. People can learn a lot about you over the internet pretty easily, it sounds like, if this was in place. Yeah, I mean, it's, I suppose it could be an issue, but I mean, there's, we've got, I can show you this. We've got uh, 365 communities using it, including 49 in Vermont. Okay. Um, and except for the ones that are, uh, they're still reviewing it, uh, like Eden, they just got it in Brattleboro. They haven't released it to the public because they haven't reviewed it yet. Um, yeah. it, most every, all this information, quite frankly, if someone wanted to find it, they're going to find it 
anyways online. Well, yeah, I, I understand that. That's, you know, it's all public. It just seems like it's pretty easily <laughs> obtainable through this. But there is some benefit to that as well. So um, I guess, you know, I, I think it needs a little bit of review by the town, but uh, not, not opposed to the whole idea, that's for sure. Yeah. Don, what do you think? Are you on? Hey, Don. Anyway, I just found out that's not an acreage problem. If you notice that parcel, it hooks across to this area here and that area there that also be combined with it. Ah. Oh, yeah, I can see that now. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little embarrassed for there for a minute. <laughs> Thought I saw a bead of sweat on your uh, forehead. There. <laughs> I was like, "Ah, oh. Sherilyn, how about you? What do you have to, to say?" Um, my biggest thing um, was making it so that tax bills and lister cards are available to the public. Uh, I called around, and um, some of our surrounding towns—they've already got them on there. I hear Ray what he's saying about identity, but I would like to also let you know that that was one of the things I talked to Franco about was the tax bills. Um, the homestead declarations are not available. They're not open to the public unless you're an attorney or a title searcher doing research. So those those values, if somebody's getting a rebate, would all be redacted. So that information would not be out there. Um, and our tax bills also do not have um, E911 locations on them now. Um, we did not print them that way this year. So that we don't have anybody in our town that owns property that is protected anyway that I know of. Um, so I don't foresee that to be an issue. Um, again, they are open to the public anyway. It's just you have to redact them, redact it, um, the homestead declaration. Lister cards, we get calls all the time for them and people need them and it does, it takes a lot of time um, for us to get them, um, whether people was to walk in or we just send it to them electronically most everybody's getting everything electronic now and this way they would have it available to them um, it's one of the things that the governor is actually requesting is that we make as many things as we can electronic and available to the public so um, I do support it um, it's ultimately up to you guys and talking to the listers I guess I don't know so all right. No, I think it was a it was a really good presentation, John or Don. See so you have your your uh, ear piece in now. Can you hear us? And would you like to say something about it? Okay, we can't hear you. Let me see. Can I also say a couple more things about that? Yeah, sure. I think that it would be great for zoning as well. Our people are always needing to know their abutters when they have to go and do a, get a permit for anything. Um, there's a, uh, as you saw, there's a lot of benefits to it, but it would definitely- I know, I think that's, that's perfect being able to even do the mailing list and, and such. Um, so that'll help making sure that people are not missing such. Um, John, anything else? John Hogan? No, I, I, as I said before, it's, it's, I think, very useful. Especially all the different things that you can show. All right, so we should probably go ahead and, and um, put this on a future agenda, get the uh, maybe the zoning administrator and, and the uh, listers uh, share with them, get their thoughts and um, and then figure out how to go forward as we go into the budget season. Uh, this is something that we could probably budget for. Uh, it's certainly a worthwhile uh, endeavor. Franco, anything else you wanna add? No, do, do you need anything else from me? Would you like me to send a proposal for your consideration or is it premature? Why don't you go ahead and send one so we have uh, something to, to uh, look at. Okay, um, um, so um, a proposal for... Um, both an internal and a... Uh, you wanna the, include the staff site setup? Yeah, just have an option there, I think. Yep. So the staff site, document linking, and and then we'll take it from there. Right, that would be perfect. And I appreciate you taking the time tonight to uh, spend with us. 
it's a, a very good presentation. Uh, certainly, uh, I learned a lot about what we uh, what we have in there. No problem. At a future date, if you want me to come and do a presentation to full board and the you know uh, other department heads and do a full presentation of what you've got, I'm happy to do it at any time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Franco. All right. All right. Have a nice night, and you're welcome to stay around if you want. But... Bye bye. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Sherilyn, I thought that was uh, very good, and um, thank you for heading that up. Uh, that was, um, I think, something, especially now with, with COVID, uh, being able to get everything online and without uh, impact staff is something that will be uh, uh, something we should seriously take a look at. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead um, and move along the, uh, the agenda. We have the update for the animal control ordinance. Um, now Shane is not on tonight, uh, so what I'd like to do with this is, is if other things we're running a little bit behind. I think I just want to table this. Uh, Shane is working on some other things with the animal control as well, um, and maybe that could be incorporated in this in this document. So um, unless anyone has an objection, I'll go ahead and move on to the planning commission. Okay, here. Hearing, hearing no objections, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the planning um, So we've got, I see uh, Karen, John Schmelzer, uh, Dave Stapleton. What else we got? Uh, Jonathan, how are you? Um, Jonathan, you want to unmute yourself? Karen? How's that? Can you hear me? Sure can, Jonathan. Okay. So why don't you go ahead? I know we have um, a couple things. I know at the end we're going to need to sign off on your, your, your planning grant. Why don't you start off and um, share with what's going on? Well, we've been looking at the zoning regulations and we're going to probably over the next year or so we're going to update and just kind of make some changes. Um, in the near term, we're looking at doing just technical stuff. There's some stuff that's been uh, suggested by the DRB and from uh, David Speck, the zoning administrator. Um, minor stuff, um, all of it has to be approved by the voters. So we're gonna go through the process probably twice on this. But, um, for help with this, we were looking to get a planning grant. The deadline for application is uh, October 1st. And I sent you the resolution, which you guys need to approve and sign. Uh, thank you. Um, if you do that, then uh, we will apply for this thing. We're supposed to hear by mid-December, we were told. And if that's the case, we have $2,000 in our budget that could be applied for this match, for this grant that we're applying for. But uh, it was in there because of the hazard mitigation plan uh, consultant that we hired. We met that, uh, satisfied that match with um, in-kind volunteer hours. So there was unnecessary to put the money in our budget, but it's there. If we can earmark this somehow for this other grant, assuming we get approved and it's awarded to us, uh, we have to do that so we don't have to ask for more money for this in the following year. Um, so you think we can get this, Jonathan, by um, uh, beginning of December? They thought they were going to... The approval would be mid-December. Whether that happens or not, we don't know. But... Is there a way that we can earmark for this and just to hold the money so it's still available in 2021 or is it like gone money? If, if we do get approved, we can apply it right away, correct? Yeah, I think so. Sherilyn, we could probably... Um, you, you can't hear uh, no. Uh, no, you can't carry money over. Only the road department can do that with cer certain things. So the money would, if they're not spend the money in this calendar year that was voted on, money would then have to be put into the budget next year for whatever they're feeling that they're gonna need. But if we're, a, if we're awarded the grant in December, 
which would be still 2020. Can we somehow, I mean, we, they, we can't send them a check because we won't at that point have received an invoice or anything. Um, well, we haven't done any work at that point, right? Right, we haven't done anything. Um, we're gonna do some stuff that doesn't require uh, a consultant. Correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, on this one. We're gonna do this in two phases, the technical changes, and then we're gonna do some substantive changes. Um, but the substantive, we're gonna kind of go through the whole zoning regulation book and probably need some help with that. Near term, we're just gonna basically go and just make sure that uh, minor changes, make sure all that the uh, headings and sections and all that are compatible with each other. Um, is there anything I'm leaving out of here, Karen? Um, well, uh, there's, it's going to be a two-step process the way we anticipate it. So as Jonathan said, the first part is just incorporating the technical changes that, um, could I make a suggestion if everybody who's not speaking mutes their microphones, then there's generally not feedback. But does that sound better at all? Yeah. Okay, so um, so the first part will incorporate just the changes that the Development Review Board uh, suggested, and they are technical in nature. There was a version of this that I um, put together a few day, uh, a few weeks ago that incorporated some of the proposals that the zoning administrator had made, but those are all substantive. And so we decided not to do that. And so our first phase is just gonna be technical DRB requested language. And we can do that on our own and hopefully have it ready for town meeting um, 2021. And then um, the planning grant, should we be awarded, would be for a general rewrite of the zoning ordinance as Jonathan described it. And the last time that somebody went through the zoning ordinance substantively was 2007, it looks like. So it's really, you know, we've thrown a lot of different pieces in there that um, are not particularly coordinated right now. Uh, so that's what we would be thinking about doing with the planning grant and also including things that um, may have passed in legislation that we haven't caught yet. So are there any questions about that? So, so Karen, this is John. Uh, I, got, I got one other thing to add is, is the other thing we want to do is we identified areas that are were kind of unclear. And one of our goals is also to, to provide more clarity associated with some, some of those uh, provisions in the, in the zoning. So John, would that be in this first technical phase? No, th no, that would be in the substantive phase. Uh, I think this technical phase is, is, is I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, is, you know, there, there was some uh, typos and things like that that just didn't make sense. So just trying to, to make sure that the, the intent of what the original language was is, uh, makes sense. Correct that. So, so if you guys could just um, make sure you take a look at the statutes and make sure all time frames are met as far as public hearings, you know, start from town meeting, work our way backwards, um, you know, provide the select board with that timeline just so we're aware and, and if there are steps that we need to take. And I know at one point we will have to approve this um, just so there, everything is ready to go. I know by the end of January, things need to be ready for um, the town report. So um, just make sure we have all those timelines in mind when we're, we're putting this forth. All right. I'll double check with about the timelines, but I emailed Cheryl and Sasha last week, and I believe it's 30 days warning for town meeting, but I believe for the two hearings, planning commission and select board, it's 15 days. Is that correct, Cheryl? Cheryl, Cheryl you need to unmute. Speak up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I believe you're correct. Um, 
again, do you still have your little book there that was done up for you with all the deadline dates and stuff in it? No, I'll dig it out though. I got Well, it. I have copies if you don't. Um, but I do believe you're correct. I believe it's 15 days for the select board, 15 days for planning, and then there is a 30 day window in there for town meeting. But we also realize we got the holidays coming up in December. I mean, it's not like this is just free open time. We're gonna try and get on this pretty quick. Uh, the, pl the planning commission will, and then we'll turn it over to you guys, this planning of the select board, you guys can have your hearing. And then just hopefully we just warn the changes for the, yes. the town meeting. Yeah, I, I think that's a good strategy to have uh, sooner than later, otherwise, you know, things can happen and it runs into not, uh, not happening. The only question that I have is about the trying not to let this $2,000 that we have slide. If we can apply it to this other grant, then it's not wasting money. Otherwise, it just evaporates into the whatever. And we have to ask for another 2000 next year. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, let me just, one suggestion. I don't know if it'll work, but if we actually get the grant in December and identify the consultant, can we pay them a retainer? <clears throat> well, can we put it in some kind of escrow or something? You give well, me you, a new voice before the end of the year and you can pay somebody. <laughs> That's yeah, so you, 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 yeah. you can't escrow it, but David got a good um, yeah. good strategy there. That might work. Uh -huh. Right. It's just a cost. I mean, it's not a lot of money, but... You no, I agree with you, because if it doesn't, like you said, it's lost and it's... And you'll have to ask for it again uh, next year. Uh, we see that happen. Uh, see that happen before. So no, I think um, if you guys identify a consultant, we get the grant, uh, get an invoice by um, uh, the end of December. We can do that, and all can be uh, good. So the the way that this particular grant is working, um, because we're a rural town, we can just ask the regional commission to be our agent. We don't have to go out to bid um, on the project. And that's a, actually a provision in the grant application. So um, we, we know for the most part that if we're going to um, get the grant that the regional commission, Zach Maya, who's helping us put the application together, would be the agent for the grant. So there you go. I mean, I think if, if she's on board uh, and you guys are happy um, with what work she does and, and it works easiest, then it's probably doable to get everything taken care of by uh, the end of December, as long as the grant does come through. Thank you. And we'll sign off. So tonight, uh, Ray and I will sign um, the, um, uh, it was, it's not an application, but the resolution. And then John, uh, you and Don have an opportunity to come in and sign the next day or so. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate you guys taking the time and, and looking at that and look forward to um, certainly the long term as far as the more um, uh, um, general or the, the bigger rewrite, I guess. May I say 20 seconds on the um, digitization proposal? You certainly may. We've, we've been working with the um, administration and the legislature to make sure that there were funds available to help with that process. And um, I think it's great that more town is going to be, uh, as I understand it, one of the towns that's doing that work because it's been very, um, as the League of Cities and Towns, we got a lot of flack, and I know Sherilyn did also, from a lot of people who couldn't access records when the whole um, COVID shut everything down. So I think this will move us in the right direction for the long term. Thank you. You're muted again. Uh, thank you, Karen. Jonathan, anything um, else with you? No, we're good. Thanks. Been fun zooming with you guys. Yeah. Thank you, all. Well, thank you everyone. I appreciate you taking the time tonight.
Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you all very much. All right, so we are moving forward and I'm not on uh, mute. Looks like everyone leaving us. Don, that, um, so you can now speak with us. I'm here. Can you hear right me? Here. We can, loud and clear. There you go. Okay. Great, good. Did, were you able to listen to any of the presentation from Franco? Yes, I did get to listen to that. I didn't hear the introduction uh, and why it was coming about, but it was it was quite interesting for sure. So we'll uh, continue that and uh, probably get, as you may have heard, uh, the other people involved, um, listeners and the uh, zoning administrator, and that will be something we want to think about uh, with our budgeting going forward. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Did you uh, mention so, about what, what kind of money that is to do that? Yeah, it's initially it was it's five hundred dollars the link. Uh, if we want to have an internal, it's another four seventy five or four or four fifty. Um, so that'll be in the proposal. It's not huge money, uh, and based on what Sherilyn says, we gain revenue the other way. We'll save it by not being interrupted during work hours. So. Um, yeah. And plus just people being able to, to get stuff when they need it for convenience. I'm sure people will be pleased with it. It is 2020. Um, it is. And certainly with um, things going on, it's, it's nice to be able to have that convenience of getting that and um, making it convenient. Yes. So Sasha, why don't you go ahead? Any reports or communications? I had... Um... Dean Moulton called and said that when the guys were digging ditches, the pins for his property line moved. I looked, um, he said Sheila Getzinger is his neighbor and Corey Wagner, and I only found a survey on file for Sheila. I don't know what that entails for us. So, um, all right, well, I'll have Ray check in with Martin on that because the, and you know how far did it move what what is it so yeah we'll certainly have to investigate that what was the name again of Dean Dean Moulton yeah all right we'll check on that okay and I was just wondering where we are at with Robert Turner Robert uh, Turner. yep Ray, did you have an opportunity to speak to Martin about um, the software? I have a book done lately about it. Uh, All right, that's something um, Ray's putting on his list as well, or I will have it. I'm going to speak to Martin and probably tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we'll get that. I know that's been budgeted this year, and um, not just to spend the money, but I think it's a tool that we can use to help identify our costs or keep track of the costs certainly for um, uh, reporting on uh, grants and such that will be useful. Yep. Anything else, um, Sasha? Nope, that's all I had. John Hogeboom, what do you got for us? I have nothing tonight. Nothing to say about the sidewalks? Nothing, all right. Well, I mean, um, you know, once again, just all, all the compliments that, that we keep getting. Um, other than that. All right. Very good. Is there any update on the on the, the bridge? Are they on schedule? John, you hearing anything or Ray on the bridge? I haven't heard anything, no. Came through. They were looks like they're almost finished paving through the uh, the village here. So that should be finished up uh, within a day or two. Um, I haven't heard any bad news about the bridge at this point. So at this point, I'm going to go with their on uh, their on schedule, Don. But um, uh, we'll yet to see. There's another. Oh, it's yeah, another I agree. Construction. Yeah, mid October. Right? Mid October. I think October 16th or 17th was their scheduled date. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, and I know there's been a few. Uh, postings on front porch form 
as far as uh, speeding cars. Has anyone else heard much of that? Or I've been on it a few times and I've, I haven't uh, witnessed a lot of speeding. I've, I've witnessed a fair amount of traffic. Or what is everyone else hearing? Is it calming down a bit or? Don, do you heard much on that? Just, uh, you know, that uh, there's people who are driving courteously and there's some people who are driving like not cases, but that's not unusual for how, every, how it is on everywhere. That's for sure. We get that every day. Right. Well, um, hopefully things will get uh, fixed on the bridge and that'll, that'll turn around. Yeah, you know, I don't think they, I think they opened the bridge on the 17th and then they still have some more work to do to finish the bridge, but at least the bridge will be open. Right, it'll be passable. Yeah. Exactly. It'll probably be uh, some time before all the landscaping and the, the finish work is done around it. Yeah, they might have some lane closures and, you know, stuff like that, but it'll be open, you know. Has anyone, uh, I don't know, the, the Valley Report is doing a pretty good job taking a weekly picture of it. Um, yeah. So if that at all, you can take a look um, and see this, the progress. And it seems, seems to be progressing fairly quickly, but... Um, yeah, the know. pictures will be good to keep for some more town history. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that'll be uh, certainly something to put in the archives. Yeah. So, Don, as you're as you're on um, and your mic is working, what is there anything else you have for us tonight? Um. Well, the only thing I was going to ask, actually, is if there was some. We have a a meeting scheduled for Wednesday. Uh, to do to talk about how we can have meetings and how committees can have meetings, and um, I'd like to one to see if we could have the we're supposed to have the meeting at the town hall, and I was wondering since it'll be a nice day if we could actually have the meeting outside. So I just while I have some of the players on the phone right on this meeting, I thought I could throw that out there maybe outside at the town hall you know be a nice day and we could you know do it outside that's all i you know or you could do it outside under the pavilion in the back here yeah so that would be all right with everybody i'm good with that yeah sure. thank you i'm good too i can call Corey. i can call Corey in the morning and, and let her know what was ray good with that he yeah. was okay. he gave a big thumbs up there yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. One of the, so one of the, that'll uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to come here tonight. It's just Ray and Ray and I are having a you know good time here together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would certainly be possible here to have a, another person come in, um, not on the board. I think I think both Don and, and um, Callie and, and John, not both of the three of you, uh, are, are probably better off at home. But if Ray and I are here and uh, there's room for one other seat, I think it would be nice if you guys could talk about how this room could be utilized. I'm just concerned that there are people in the community who aren't being heard or, or would like to come to a meeting or express something, but they're not on Zoom or they're not on Skype. They just don't have the technology. And so at least once a month, I would like to be able to provide that one person at a time. And they'll just have to knock before they come in. And, and I would certainly be willing to, to clean at the end of the night. I, I don't, you know, think it's that it would be that, um, that bad to wipe up and, and such for the next day. But so when you guys are talking, you know, look at different venues as well in different size groups. So, all right, you know, if we have a group that's two to three, well, this place here would be appropriate and this is how it could work. Now, if we get over the number of five or six, well, then we need to move it into this building and this is how it would work. So if you guys would, would do that, I would really appreciate it as would a lot of people I know, um, different boards have been been asking about how, how they can meet. And you can do that outside on uh, Wednesday, Don. Yep, great. Uh, all right. good all really good points tom and that's what will be why we're going to meet to see what we can get rolling yeah thanks no it would just be good and then uh yeah uh because we want to we want to certainly make sure we're 
you know, following the, the mandates. And so, you know, I would have, as you're, as you're going through that meeting, make sure you have the government's mandates that are out there, you know, whether it's under 50, I don't, you know, I don't know them offhand, but just so that that's your framework. Uh, and then we can be more um, stringent than that, you know, but uh, at, at least we need to follow those rules and then incorporate what we feel is, is, is best um, for all of us and the safety of all. So, all right. Um, is, do you think we could maybe, uh, uh, I could ask uh, either Sasha or Cheryl Lynn, could, is, I don't think if they could just print, I think they just have a short, you know, uh, there's some bullets of the mandates, aren't they? That, that's out in the, on the Vermont Health site. Yeah, State yeah Health. I've already if got you could print something. Oh, you have them already? Great, yeah. perfect. I mean, I've seen them electronically, but it would be nice to have a copy for the meeting. Yeah. So. Yeah, if everyone had it at the time, that would probably be um, probably be helpful. All right. Uh, all right. So, um, if anyone, yeah, if there's Tom, more, I can just uh, mention. I um, did want to just say that, uh, the certificate of completion for the project has been signed. Uh, both Ray and I signed it, and. Um, so there will be a final walkthrough because there's a little punch list, especially some pike. It, it seems like they messed up the curb in several places. Um, chips out of it and um, scratches and uh, some tack. Like the store I noticed uh, today, there's more of that going up toward Mount, Moortown Mountain Road. So um, I, 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 they did a real messy job. And yeah. you know, the whole whole team pretty much uh, agreed with that. All right. Um, go, yeah. So when are you guys doing that, John? Uh, time hasn't been set yet. So right. I think I think they're they're waiting until Pike is out of there. It's funny in general. I think Pike has done a good job. Uh, I don't know what, uh, but the paving seems to look like they've done a good job. But I don't know. Uh, everything else, but uh, I guess that walk around will tell us. Um, all right, anyone wants to give me a, a, a motion on the select board minutes from the 8th? I move we appoint the, uh, appoint, approve the minutes of uh, the 8th. All right, and I saw Don second. second that, yes, he did. All in favor, vote yep. aye, approving the minutes. All right. got Ray with his thumbs up, and I and Don and John. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, so old business. Anything below? Um, first thing I know, old business, we didn't get to last week. Uh, Sherilyn had emailed me and Ray, or maybe she didn't, Ray, I don't know. Uh, as far as Martin's time that he was rolling over and from the from 2019 and I guess there's a, a question on what he could roll over we didn't quite get to that last week uh, we did say he could roll over but um, and, and Cheryl Lynn had something written down with, with 26 although not quite sure correct me if I'm wrong Cheryl Lynn where that is or what, where that came from um, so what I do know is at the end of 2019, he had 50 hours of um, time to roll over. We let them roll over 24 hours anyways, and that's in the, the, uh, the, the employee handbook. So that would leave um, 34 hours um, to roll over. So, uh, and he was doing that. We were allowing that last year um, for his operation. So the question was, you know, how many hours was it was? I think we just give him the full 34 to let him roll over again this year, um, as long as he's rolling it over for that operation. Can I say something? It's 58 hours. No, I understand. I understand that. Okay. Uh, but we also, but, We'll also we'll let him do the whole 58, but he can roll over 24 anyways. Yeah. 
So that's, you know, off the, you know, that's his to roll over regardless. So the question is, is the 34? Is he already, am I, that's correct math, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and so I would say let him uh, roll over the, the 34 plus his 24 that he uh, would roll over anyways. But the 34 was earmarked for the operation. That's why we're doing that. John? I agree with that. That seem That's in, in Ray? Yep. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Give us a thumbs up, Ray, if you could. <laughs> All right, and Don as well. Yeah, I, that sounds good to me. So that's the whole thing. I think, Cheryl, does that answer it for you? Is that all right? Yeah, I just need, because there is no motion anywhere. I don't know if you guys need to make a motion because there hasn't been one made in any of the previous minutes. So if we could just maybe have a motion so that I have something to throw in the file. Okay, I will move that we allow Martin um, to uh, carry over the additional 34 hours in addition to his uh, um, 24 that is uh, in the employee handbook uh, and the 34 earmark towards uh, his time off during his operation. I'll second that. John seconds that. Any other discussion on that? I just oh. want to mention that uh, there actually, I had thought that we had uh, voted last time, but uh, or back, back in uh, December, January. But, uh, yeah, I, we, I we didn't. It was, it was, it was talked about in the minutes, but I guess we never didn't formalize formally move. Right. So this will we'll do that, and uh, I know we talked about. It. I remember Ray making a point about it. So whatever it is, it, it is, and he's getting his full time moved over, and hopefully he's uh, able to get his operation done at some point. That'll be good. So. I'm in favor. Nice to hear, Don. All right. Um, service our land management. Um, what else we got on old business that we need to take care of? One of the things that we need to address that we've had that's been going on, and I'm not sure quite how to get taken care of because Mike has not been able to get back with us. Um, but if you guys all remember, we had the um, mistake that was made, the listers made uh, last year with Green Mountain Power. Uh, they were overcharged. Um, uh, VLCT had a claim form uh, and Mike had questions to answer. Uh, to answer and, and Mike has never, never done that and has not responded back to um, communications. So, uh, I'm not really proposing any action here, but I'm just letting you guys know, uh, and if anyone has any idea how best to get in touch with Mike, uh, you know, let me know. Um, Otherwise, there, there are some questions here I'll try to answer, uh, but these should be taken care of by the listers. And, you know, this should have been done a long time ago, quite frankly. I certainly think that we have tried to get Mike to take care of that enough. I mean, it's why he hasn't responded or anything. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the emails are, you know, this one here, April 11th, um, and there's been certainly lots of communication since then, and, and just recently Cheryl in again. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure, certain. And you know, at this point, BLCT is just um, going to close it out with nothing going on here. Um, so uh, that's something that needs to be taken care of. Um, so if anyone wants to talk about that offline or has any ideas on how we can um, try to get a response, I would appreciate that. Carolyn, anything for you on that? Um, 
we still owe them a credit. So we've been holding on to that, waiting to hear about this. So do we still want to hold on? I mean, no, I think we just hold, until we get that part figured out, we'll hold on um, because they haven't been not like they're knocking out the door looking for the money. And, and quite frankly, I've called them or a couple different times and mm -hmm. they have not responded back. So um, uh, let's try to get settled on this side and then we can work that credit with them. Okay. Uh, so I don't think there's anything else that we have uh, an old business pending that we need to, to look at tonight. I know Don, once we get um, how we're going to meet it or how we probably want to meet going forward, I know the town off town hall use community wants yep. to get going. Um, so I don't think there's anything else in old business. Is there any other uh, new business that anyone has or would like to sh share with us tonight? Nope. Um, one thing while we're, and I'm signing off on tonight, and, and again, John, if you could come in at some point, uh, the Municipal Roads Grant, um, it's just, actually there's only three signatures need, so Ray can sign off on this tonight. Uh, but we'll do that tonight as well. We'll be signing off on that. Uh, and then just looks like just our regular, um, payroll and such. So the people could get in in the next couple of days so we could get um, everything, all our select board orders and such signed off. I would appreciate it. Uh, yes. Anything else uh, from uh, the board? Sorry. Don, you look like you're sleeping on us, buddy. No, I'm right here. I'm, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> totally. I'm, I'm glad I finally got connected. I was a little frustrated there, but here I am. Yeah, no, you sound uh, loud and clear. I noticed uh, Jamie and Jennifer. Jennifer, Miss Hill, are you um, just here to uh, listen to the meeting, or is there something we can uh, help you with? Hi. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey Jennifer. I am just hanging out <laughs> um uh I, I don't have any things uh i just knew that uh, meeting spaces were coming up so i was just coming to hear all about that and the wednesday meeting so uh i'm all set thank you good yeah all right well thanks for for joining us and yeah i think all the merrier or not all the merrier but people with the um skin in the game if they want to get to this meeting uh that don is is chairing on wednesday at nine, nine o'clock yeah uh the better so that everyone can have a voice um just don't fight and um and then uh, we'll look forward to hearing back on their next meeting charlene is that all right with you <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Well, unless there's anything else going on, I would move to adjourn. Second. All right, thank you. Ray, that's a really cool looking picture in your, your profile right now. I, know, I like that. <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, what the hell? Point there. <laughs> yeah. oh, there we are, that's better. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. All right, uh, so all in favor to adjourn. Let's vote on. All right. All right. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming. We'll talk to you soon.